items five through nine from the agenda. And uh, on item number nine, the citizen forum, uh, we had sent out to set up a email uh, correspondence system and uh, the applicant or people were given until noon today to get me comments that they would like to have read into the record for this meeting and I do have some of those at the end of the meeting that I'll read into the record there's only three uh, but that'll be it as far as citizen comments for this evening please state the reason that we're doing what we're doing well I uh, social distancing obviously and, and minimizing exposure in a you know public meeting setting uh, and limit our time that we're together uh, obviously for the coronavirus and concerns about that uh, as we kind of work through this kind of new new territory that we're all in I don't think any of us really know exactly what to do and what the proper response is but we definitely want to try to to limit you know the time that we're here this evening and and uh, the amount of time that we're together so I'm gonna move to approve uh, the amended um, agenda a second all those in favor Aye. 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 opposed move on quickly to the approval of the minutes for the February 20th so moved second all those in favor Aye. Aye. one abstain so we are uh, item number three of the new agenda discussion and public hearing on a resubdivision plat for the Rebecca Goen property 11 625 Turkey Creek Road 10.24 acres three lot zone R-1 Bateson, Himes, Norval, Norwell and Norville and Poe applicant uh, this property is on fronts on Turkey Creek Road and then a small portion of it fronts actually in uh, on Spring Branch Road in uh, Inverness subdivision there on the north part of the property. Uh, the applicant uh, is proposing to divide the property. Uh, it's currently two tracks and this will be into three. And uh, <clears throat> you can see the existing house lot. It would be lot three under this layout. There would be a new lot to the west of that uh, and then a new lot to the north. Uh, that would access actually the the road in Inverness and we did look at the plat for Inverness and it did provide for that uh, access so there were a couple of things just to point out with this pretty simple plat um, one would be the access on the Turkey Creek Road for lot 1R uh, we would recommend um, that they access line up with Lake Haven Road uh, and Lake Haven subdivision which I believe topographically that works out. It looks like it would. Yeah. Um, and because this is a collector street on Turkey Creek Road and the access points are required to be 200 feet apart. So that's why it needs to, to line up. It's, it's a more safe arrangement that way. And then the second uh, item was, um, the, there is normally a requirement for a 10% open space dedication as part of a subdivision. Normally that's applied to subdivisions, you know, where new public improvements are being uh, provided. Uh, they do have an area on the uh, eastern portion of the property where it could be open space if, if you all chose to do that. Um, but the applicant has requested a variance from that because really it would potentially create a situation where we're creating a separate lot and then yeah, you know, there's a question about how that's going to be maintained and the, and there would have to be covenants that would address that specifically. Um, I think that based on the scale and the scope of the, the subdivision at this time, um, there is language in the subdivision regulations that would support a variance because it is essentially a minor revision to existing lots of record and the staff would support that variance request for that reason. Uh, you'll need to take action on the variance request and then we'll take action on the plat itself. Uh, but the staff does support uh, the variance from the 10% open space. Mark, can I just ask a question? Um, uh -huh. When you're saying a variance from the 10% open space, where would we require that? on? on which lots would they be required well to have i mean only as far as just an open space area but it really doesn't wouldn't meet the intent of community open space because it really wouldn't be 
because used these, by the community but it would yeah. be over in this this eastern part oh, yeah. okay of the property because that's a big drainage area there yeah um it has some tva backwater in that area uh, part of it's on this property and part of it's over in inverness okay so really i what i'm looking at is there's potential to further subdivide um lot two and at that point um, we would require some open space at that point, which that yeah. area could be used. They, to do that, used. though, they would have to probably extend a, the cul-de-sac into the property further to get, okay. you know, uh, to get any real density in that kind of remaining area. And that's pretty unlikely that that would ever happen. So it's, it's probably just going to be a nice large lot Outslot. for someone. It has been used as a goat farm, which I... <laughs> And that still is okay, uh, and that's a, that's pretty entertaining. I, I've watched them many times over there when I was helping them with Inverness. But uh, so uh, yeah, that's kind of. But there's potential, or, and even it's, so, anything's possible. Yeah, it could be subdivided in the future. But that's that true. area over here that you're pointing to, that you've circled, isn't uh, developable anyway. No, it's not. So it's already kind of in, uh, open space. It's already open space. It's open space. It's not really a community open space because it's really not usable. Okay. So I think just with the scale of I this subdivision, yep. the number of lots involved, yep. it, I think it, it okay. is justified to support a variance, at least from the staff's perspective. That's all I had for questions. Anybody else have any questions or comments? None. Yeah, my, uh, only, my only comment is though that, that that driveway, it does line up very well, and the sight lines off Turkey Creek Road coming both directions are very clear. Very, yeah. Okay, good. Lake Haven, yeah. And that's a tough road, so. Yeah, it can be. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. yeah, that is. You're the applicant, representing the applicant? Um, yes, I am. Could you tell us who you are, please? Hi, I'm David Harbin uh, with the Engineer Surveyor with Batson Himes, Norvell, and Poe. And we're in, obviously in support of, of staff recommendation. And just one more point on, on that, uh, the, the dedication to the open space. Uh, it says in the regulations that any development is required uh, for that. And, and, you know, another thing, I'm, I'm not so sure that, that this qualifies as a development, just resubdividing lots. And so we're not really creating, you know, subdivision here with uh, roads and everything else so that would give you even more latitude in this case to 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 grant the variance because i'm sure miss cohen's will, will argue the fact that she is not a developer she she is uh, not that at all uh, but you're okay with the lo new location to the road absolutely okay good, good. any other questions or comments uh, i move for approval of the variance on the open space second all those in favor aye, aye. opposed so. Okay, then the second action will be on the plat itself, and the staff recommends approval. Um, I guess with the plat node, I don't if you may already have this on there to line up to access with Lake Haven Road, and, uh, and then obtaining all the signatures for the plat. We'll move for second. approval of the plat. With, with that stipulation. With that stipulation yeah. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. You miss Goins? Okay, item number four, discussion and public hearing on site plan amendment related to the open space and the appearance of proposed retaining walls for phase two of the PCD development at a 115 South Watt Road, 18.65 acres zone PC, PCD Watt Road Investments LLC applicant. Give them a few minutes to change people. Yeah. You may let the applicant, I think the applicant is here, some representatives. Yeah, they're, they're outside. Okay, this is really just an asking the Planning Commission to look at a couple of items. So it's kind of a, I guess it's, I don't know if it's an amendment to the site plan, but if you if you may remember uh, back in uh, July of 2018, the full site plan for this phase, the multifamily phase was approved with a number of conditions. Um, since that time, the applicant's been 
working through those and working with financing and things like that. And uh, a couple of things come up in his later version uh, that is it, staff frankly didn't feel comfortable making the decision on it. We wanted to make sure you all were aware of it and, um, you know, could decide one way or the other what you wanted to do. The first uh, question was dealing with just open space and we've already of course talked about the the main open space in the development um, and that's kind of been hashed out with previous discussions um, I guess what the staff was looking at that we were a little bit uncomfortable with I think is they've gotten in and done more detailed design they've had to add some more interior retaining walls like in some areas between buildings uh, it's not really you know required open space areas but it's areas that kind of could bisect kind of gathering spaces um, and uh, we just didn't you know feel comfortable with those kind of changes because if you look at the original concept plan drawing that went with the rezoning it's just solid green you know we don't have those kind of structures in these spaces um, so it you know, I think as they've gotten in and <clears throat> gotten into more details, a lot of the the things that are on the original concept plan we've found to be uh, difficult to realize, um, and uh, that's not necessarily our our issue, but it's something that we wanted to to make you all aware of. That's kind of a a large let me blown up sheets here. This is over on the uh, southeast part of the project corner. And that shows a little bit more in the detail of some of those walls interior between buildings, um, some transformers and things that are now in some of those, those green spaces. Uh, and then you look, and this is further northwest, or northeast, excuse me. Um, this actually shows two of the larger open community open spaces that we looked at in the past, the one on the, the left there and then the one in the upper right. Um, and then I think there's this area here. And that one is in the, uh, the west, the uh, southwest corner of the property. It actually backs up to Loudoun County in the due west. Um, in that in that area so as you know in the the plan commercial district um, does have a higher <laughs> expectation of design and quality um, it in exchange for relaxing certain things that you couldn't do in general commercial or regional commercial for example on this project as you may remember we actually amended the PCD to allow residential in this zoning district it wasn't allowed when Kroger was developed the Kroger marketplace and they actually have a density in this portion of their project that's much higher than what we have in R6 so there's been some give that has been granted by the town and uh, you know again the expectation is that you know we need to have a project that's not just a regular R6 or a regular C1 but it's a notch above that in all aspects so so that was something the open space so important there we just wanted to make you all aware of it and if you had any comments or if you were okay with that um, then that's fine but we we just didn't feel like making the call on that particular particular issue and then we'll talk about the other one after after this if you want does anybody have any any questions about that or <clears throat> those areas the rationale behind them you know, okay what we see yeah. in particular uh, between like can. buildings yeah. eight and nine seven and eight and three and four yeah um, if you could just run through that and kind of what's the rationale of what's yes um, what's mark bilek gvs engineering 1313 Camilla road the reason there's an interior retaining wall and it would actually show up mark did you have the grading plant blow-ups no i can no it's topographic topography is what the issue is. It's, it, the difference between the, 
part of the problem is building nine and building eight, there's nine foot of difference in elevation in the fill flo finished floors. In order to create some flat area between the spaces, we had to add, <coughs> excuse me, a retaining wall so that when you walk out of building nine and turn right, going, if you're going towards the back, if you turn right off the sidewalk, that area all the way over to the, including the transformers, all the way up to retaining wall, is basically flat. There is, there is no, I mean, there's a little bit of slope just for drainage, but we created a flat area that for the residents to have a common space. Otherwise, we'd have a slope that goes from building to building. And we tried to create a common space. And the same thing on this, the uh, building three side of building nine, eight, we did the same thing there. We put a wall in there so that there would be a flat area in there for the residents to use, to walk their dogs, to you know, have a place for their, that they know their kids can run around with a soccer ball and kick a soccer ball around that they're not going to be out in, the, out in the street. But we purposely did that to create flat areas. It's the only reason we put the retaining walls in. How wide of a space is that? Well, it's 30 foot between buildings. So it's about 20 feet that's flat now. What's the difference in elevation? Between buildings nine and building eight, there's yeah. not nine foot of difference in nine finished feet. floor elevation, elevations. So how high was the retaining wall? The retaining wall in that area right there is about five foot tall. Um, I've said it in a staff developer meeting, I'm still standing by it. This, you're, every time we come back and t look at these spaces in between, they become less and less inviting and less and less usable. Now you have to walk down a narrow alleyway to get into the space, it, and then there's the, tran the uh, whatever those units are in there. It's unattractive, it's not inviting, um, and I said it, I've said it before, you're trying to fit a size 10 foot into a size 7 shoe, um, and every time you come back here, we, we're the ones that have to, we've relented and relented, and now we're looking at a, a project that is so different from uh, the original concept plan that um, I, 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 I can't vote for this. I'm not, I'm, I don't support this. I don't think that this is, uh, this is. Well, Louise, originally we had slopes between there with no flat space at all. I'm just, you know it, it, what, I'm reading this, and, and quite frankly, the concept plan was, I get it, I'm learning, I'm a slow learner sometimes, the concept plan was, just showed green space. So you think this is going to be usable green space, and then as you guys get into the grading and you get into it, you realize it's really Well, not, the concept was not a complete design. I understand that. But this was not what I envisioned. This is not usable. As a woman walking a dog, she's not going to walk down that little narrow spot to come back in there and consider that usable. You mean a, a six-foot wide grass area is not a walkable space? Getting to it is not inviting. It, it, I'm talking across the front of the building, between the back of the curb and the building, is six feet. Clear, flat, grass area. I, where I where is the six feet? Between the face of the building and the back of the sidewalk. I mean, not the sidewalk, back of the curb. There's a retaining wall along the curb line also to get the flat area. It so, changes grades because there's a slope going between building nine and building eight that changes grade nine feet. Hey, John. Open space to encourage ingenuity, creativity, and resourcefulness in land planning so techniques by developing functional, common, open spaces. And, and, to, and to me, this is not a functional, so common, saying, open space. We have, that is, Louise, you know, our common space, common open space, is the same open space we've had since day one, which is the area around the pond and the flat area there and above the retaining wall. But this, to this, me, when I looked at the concept plan, this was part of the common open space to me. And so that was all part of it, because you're not going to, you want to walk your dog, you just want to take a nice walk, you want to have a pleasant uh, experience, and now we've got these 30-foot walls, and we have retaining walls in between, and um, the, I'm, there's not, not Those walls are not 30-foot tall in that area. I know. 
on the outside. She's talking well, about the periphery. Those have been that way since day one also. If it's a five foot wall, yeah. you've got a nine foot slope, mm -hmm. then where's the top of the wall relative to the elevation of the ground on each side of the wall? On the building eight side is three foot, three to four foot below the finished floor of building eight. And on building nine side, it's eight inches below finished floor. Eight inches? Yes. Below finished what? Below finished floor. The finished floor of that elevation. Okay. We have to be. Is there a railing on top of it? On top of the retaining wall? Yes. We have to. That's by code, we have to put a railing on it. That's yes. My yes. And the walls will affect tree planting because he's showing some red maples in there, and red maples have pretty aggressive roots. So it could lessen the quality of your landscape design by having the walls in there. I mean, it's something that they may have to go with smaller plant material, you know, just to lessen the potential for interfering with walls or whatever, transformers, whatever else that gets added in those spaces over time. Would you look at something like going to a kind of an average elevation in a flat area, but with some steps that just came down to the, to the to the area where can't it's have going. steps it's got to be ADA compliant that's why we created the flat areas to make, make them ADA compliant that's another reason we put the retaining walls in is so that we meet in ADA requirements is this a retaining wall here mark I could tell but I uh, think where, it is what you're talking about it's right there there is a little retaining wall there, yes. Because that's the kind of stuff that Bart and I, when we were looking at it, gave us some heartburn because it goes right through the middle of your green space area. And that's the kind of stuff that we weren't comfortable making the call on. It was just bisecting those. Because then again, it's limiting shade tree planting because you don't have enough physical space in there that's that's unencumbered well we could move the retaining wall right against and the back of curb and give you the green space we were trying to step the walls up so that you're not you know and trying to minimize the heights of the walls everywhere we could tree planting to give it more free space for sure i don't know about you know some of the other things because that what you're doing there with these walls is you're you're affecting your palette of acceptable landscaping that you're going to have in these areas because you simply can't put a red maple where you're showing them right there on that plan it's just not going to work we we that is something we can take care of So in the statement here that uh, Mark has about um, between buildings are now being bisected by additional retaining walls. So there would be some space, a retaining wall, and then some more space? We're trying to make it so that the, the flat areas was the predominant and the slope areas, which would be strictly for maintaining accessibility around for maintaining the building, would be minimized so that we get the most out of it. The only the only real place that it it is is between buildings eight and nine. <clears throat> All the rest of them do have a retaining wall that bisects from top to bottom, but we also have eleven foot difference in finished floors between this four three split. So we we're trying to create you know usable space for the residents to use and a landscape. Anybody else have any questions? Nope. Well, no. I know one of the other comments that uh, we heard at staff developer was that the transformers moved. Well, yeah, because when we talked to LCUB where we had them shown up against the retaining walls on the bottom side, they said, how do we maintain them? They couldn't, he said, are you going to provide an access way all the way back in there for them? And I said, we can't guarantee that. He said, well, then you need to put them by the, as close to the curb line as you can put them. So that's why we moved them to where we're at, so that they, they can maintain the electric system. That's like right here. Just, I, think I have a question. Yes. Uh, if we do not approve 
your retaining walls that you're adding, what will the result be of those areas? They become totally useless. Pardon? They'll be totally sloped all the way across. They will not be able, I mean. And the slope goes, is what? From building to building at three to one. Three to one slope yep. between nine and, and eight, eight mm -hmm. and nine. Mm -hmm. It's not very useful now. Right now you have a 20 foot flat area. Well. Before, after we get done, there will be no flat area. I find your drawings hard to allow me to visualize what you're doing here. Well, this is a, uh, a color often, rendering. Oftentimes you have drawings that kind of look like that to oh. help people like me figure out what it is you're doing. Wow. And these here, as Luis said, looks like the perception was we had more space than we really did, usable space. And the key here, I think, is usable. Uh, and usable and inviting and uh, accessible and an asset and creative and um, this is where we're, everything else is being dealt with and then this is what suffers. Um, you've got your buildings in there, you've got your, uh, you've, you've managed to get all the stuff that you want in there and then all the stuff that we want as a planned commercial development, which gives you a lot of leeway, keeps getting compromised and compromised some more and compromised some more. And um, I find that very frustrating because this is supposed to be an asset to our community and the way it's going, I, I don't understand who would want to live here. And that's, um, that's not an asset to our, it's a, it's a big parking lot with a with an apartment and a grocery store and it's it, it, I'm just very disappointed in how this is going and when we, we we speak to you and tell you you're trying to put too much on here you are trying to put too much on a compromised um, difficult property to to uh, build on and uh, everything that we value has been compromised so that you can have everything that you want. And um, I can't compromise anymore. I'm frustrated that this is becoming something that people aren't going to want to live here. It's, 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 I'm very concerned about this. And it's, it, it, it just keeps on going. It's like a death by a thousand cuts. Well, can I speak to that for a second? We are required to have, what Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, is it 5% or 10% open space for the whole development? 10%, yeah. And we have close to, in our common areas, close to 20% open space. But how much of it is usable? If you're, you're, you're counting the, all of it. All of it. Are you counting the, the, the space that's up beyond the, the um, retaining wall, behind the retaining the wall, the periphery. A portion of it, yes. And how much of that is usable? In the retention pond you're counting too? The whole area of the retention pond, yes. It's a dry, it's going to be a wet pond. There's going to be a, a, a lake there that people could, you know, do remote control boats on or whatever. And that whole flat area between next to building two. Just those two areas alone also already get us over the 10%. So, I mean, we're over the required green space, open space for this total development. And we're developing all the open space in the first phase. So uh, help me here. The areas that we're really talking about today where you've put added those walls so that you it's said you've got two flat areas, what percent of your open space is that? Is that zero? That's not counted. It's as not counted space? in any part of our open space. Thank you. common open space areas has been the same since day one that we got our concept plan approved. And we have not changed the common open space areas. Now the areas between the buildings, we're trying to make them so that they're functional by putting in retaining walls and creating flat areas for people to go and use. I thought that would be an asset to you all. Apparently it's not. Mark, would you show me six feet from the front of our desk out in the I'm six foot tall. You're six foot tall. Yes. 
Yeah, if, I lay down, if I laid <laughs> no, down, if I laid down, it'd be the <laughs> Seriously, you want me to lay down? I'll <laughs> no, be more happy. I'll just stand there. Just stand there. I'm six foot two. So um, we're required sidewalks in the town of Fairview is five feet. We got an extra foot over required sidewalks. It'll be a grass here. It'll be flat. It'll be ADA compliant. I don't know how long this is. Is this six feet? No. Like 36 inches. Well, I'm six feet tall, exactly. So that's six feet. Yeah. You're looking at about three and a half, three and a half chairs. Yeah. Three and a half chairs. Yeah. I'm estimating. Yeah. 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 This is my ruling. Yep. No, that's um, I'd rather see trees or something, some kind of plantings in there, and it not be just nothing. Oh, there's going to be plantings in there. Yeah. There will be shrubs along the wall to soften the look of it. We're going to be having trees. Uh, I mean, the landscape plan is very intense. It hasn't gone to the VRB yet. That is true. We have not. Plan. Well, because we can't go to VRB till we get past you all. So. Well, I'd rather that whole space be filled in with something pretty and foliage and as opposed to just a flat open space. Well, it shows it. We right. also have foundation planning along the edge of the building to soften that connection. Yeah. It shows it there pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're showing that. Yes. It, it really mostly limits your trees, your tree yes. planting. And, and we can we can work with areas to make sure that the tree plantings work because Pat's uh, Al that works for Pat, Pat and I have been, him and I worked together to get these walls and get these flat areas in because we needed them for the ADA compliance. And we spent probably close to a week on the phone, almost eight hours a day, trying to get this all worked out. So we're, he's very aware of all of this and it's all being incorporated into the landscape plan so that the planting shown, you know, what plantings we're proposing will work in the areas that are there. So that, that said, Mark, you mentioned some concerns about the plantings. I'll bring that up to Al, and we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll look at that. that when, he, when he looks at this more carefully, he'll know that you can't put at the RM, I assume that's red maples. That there's no way you can put those where he's got them. Okay. That, that'd be a disaster. Yeah, you I'm a novice to landscaping, so I'll, I will yeah. definitely bring that up to him. Yeah, that's, that's what it's going to really compromise is your shade tree shade trees because you're have, breaking up that expansive root space and compromising it you know vertically in the ground and so it's and it could end up compromising your walls if you if you don't have the right trees in there so so I'll add just one more point um, by the way I'm Pat I and PDI architecture 1020 Brazil Road Pendleton South Carolina um, the other, just to make a point, it, it's, I understand the concerns of the wall. Uh, we could slope it. I mean, we're going through an added expense by doing that wall because we feel it's a better use of the space or more better usable space by flattening the areas. So, I mean, it, it, it isn't that we were just trying to, we we're trying to make the best of it because it added costs to our client. So, I mean, we were. Now, whether you think the slope's better or, or the walls, we can, you know, whatever we, we can talk about that. But just want to point out that we were trying to uh, make the better situation. You have the same slope issue on the north end of that uh, corridor between eight and nine. You know, the smaller yes. section. Is we also, the we also, there's, issue sorry, there? there's also a bike rack that we need to make accessible right. as well. So, yeah. Yes. That, that's why the retaining wall comes off there between eight and nine on the northern end going towards the, towards the bottom of the page is to create a flat area towards nine and it loops around and protects the retain the uh, the bike spaces so that it sits in there proper and we can get meet a, all the ADA requirements of that also and there will be a guardrail around the top of that area there and we have the bike spaces set up so that they they are right the correct amount of spacing per the town requirements so that even with the wall they still have plenty of room to put their bikes in there without fighting trying to fight over each other 
will say also that there there was a give on our end and our client's end as well is by putting the condensing units on the roof so that really helped the, those green spaces as well and we gladly did that I mean that was something we did a long time ago after the first discussions so there won't be any condensing units on, on the ground there you probably have to look at that over here because you won't meet the setbacks in this area with these units so you'll have to look at that on building one um, mark if I remember correctly when we looked at this in concept plan that strip of property that's right there between us and Watt Road is a common space for the adjacent townhouses next door, and you all consider that part of the setback because nothing can be built in it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That I was back to approved back and... way back when we first started doing the concept, and we set the buildings. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at that. You might be right. I don't, I don't know why we would do that because that's not where the property line is, but. I just pointed it out because I've noticed it in this review. But. Yeah, and we talked about it, staff developer, and brought up the same point that we had, that would be, was one of the things that was talked about, very first things we talked about in regards to doing this concept plan and this concept and setting these buildings on the property. And Louise, I think you, your concern about retaining walls. There's an apartment complex over by Westtown Mall that has 40 foot of retaining walls, and it's 100% occupied. And there's one at North Shore, also has tall retaining walls, and is 100% occupied. I'm not, I guess part of the concern is occupancy, but the other concern is the long-term attractiveness. The, this is, once you build it, that's it. Once you've got it up, that's it. That's what we've got. You guys, you move along, and uh, this is what we have. And um, I, I'm concerned that this is not the asset I had originally hoped that we would be getting from um, this right. PCD and putting the uh, – because I still think, strategically speaking, this is a great place for apartments. Uh, I do. I just think that you're trying to cram so much on – to one, uh, a piece of property that's already difficult to, to build on, and um, whatever vision we had has long been compromised. Well, we're not increasing the number of units since day one. We're the same exact number of units, same basic layout since day one of the concept plan. And these areas do not count towards our common open space. We're trying to make them attractive for use by the residents. The developers agreed to spend money to do so. I mean, he doesn't. I mean, we could slope it between and, you know, just say willy nilly, okay, fine. We're not trying to make it, you know, not trying to make it nice for the residents, but we're trying to make areas that are, that the residents can use per your all's requirements. I mean, we're not asking to add any more units. Or anything like that. Anybody else any more questions and comments on this aspect? I guess I would uh, add, with all due respect to Louise, uh, you know, we've been through quite a bit of review on this through a period of a long period of time. Yes. We're talking about a small area of a large project. We do have a large open space in the project. Yes. And uh, I'm not. I'm not, uh, yeah, I don't like it. Uh, I think, yeah, we've compromised on several elements, but uh, I don't see any reason not to, to go with that and, and let the residents use the space as they want to use it. I don't think, and where it's at located on the, on the site, it's, if you slope it, you don't have to put retaining walls in. It's not going to be useful if you slope it. Right. And so try to get as much use as we can out of it if people just want to walk their dog, yeah. for God's sakes. Yes. There's other larger open space for more active activity. Yes. Well, I'll say this, and as somebody who has gone for years to uh, developments in South Carolina, I was expecting more for it to more look like some of those that I've seen in Kiowa and Hilton Head, uh, which I think my main problem with it is, and it's too late for this, I'm sure, but the buildings are just in a row. I was expecting them to be a little more village-like, 
um, scattered well, around and all. That would be great. That would be wonderful. We would love to do that, but the contours don't allow it. Yeah. We've got the, the grades fall. We've got to work with the grades or we can't fit everything mm -hmm. in. We'd have even more walls. Yes. Yes. Let's move on to the second one. Any more questions, comments? Nope. Okay, then we'll move on to the uh, other aspect of this. Take action on that open space question first, or uh, how do you want us to do it? I just act as if it were just a regular. Oh, it's two different, two item. different yeah. things here that we need yeah. to yes. address. We'll okay. get to the retaining wall next, but this, this will be the it the, really the spaces in between the buildings is frankly what we're mostly talking about here. Whether y'all uh, understand what they're trying to do and are okay with it, or if you'd rather do something different. Okay, do I have a motion? I move for approval of the acceptance of the uh, uh, open space as, as shown. Second. I'll move, I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? One day. Okay. Okay. The second uh, item that we wanted to bring to your all's attention again, we weren't really comfortable with this because the actual look of the wall was never really shown in any previous renderings. The, there have been details of how it would be anchored into the soil, but not exactly what it's going to look like. Um, so in um, doing more research on the project, they found that most of the periphery of the project is, in fact, wood, and it's in a transition area. So they have to stay out of it by coat, by requirement of the district. Um, so basically, in order to get a retaining wall that can be constructed and stay out of, out of the, uh, the area, they are proposing what's called a soil nail wall, and that's what it, that's what it looks like in raw form. Um, it's basically a wall that where they inject rods in at an angle into the soil, different spacings, and then uh, cover that with some type of shot creek concrete or something like that, and then then you can always cover that with another exterior veneer. Um, again, you know, a lot of this, these walls are, I understand it's topography, but I think Louise correctly indicates that, and I've said this from day one, it's just trying to get too much stuff in a limited space. It's creating these walls. Uh, I think we go up to about 35 feet with the tallest retaining walls in this latest design, and they are around most of the periphery. So that's the type of wall that I believe they're proposing um, <clears throat> the, the, as far as the facade, the face of it, um, unless something's changed, uh, what's been proposed is something like that, which is a shot, shot creek concrete application over the soil nails. Uh, it's kind of a solid, kind of an industrial look, frankly, uh, in the staff's opinion. Um, you know, they do have a proposal that they submitted to provide for uh, vines that would ultimately cover the wall, I guess, draping over from the top. You know, we tried that with J.C. Penney and that didn't, didn't really work out. Um, so what they're proposing, again, unless something's changed that I'm unaware of, is kind of a solid concrete wall uh, that kind of looks like that. What, when we talked about this at the staff developer meeting, we talked about trying to break the wall up visually into segments and smaller modules to make it look better. Um, <clears throat> and that, uh, we, we haven't gotten anything that's been submitted that shows us that they're planning to do that other than just the vines uh, growing over basically a solid <clears throat> concrete wall. Uh, you know, in doing research on this, there's certainly plenty of wall veneers that can be added over these uh, these Shot Creek walls. Again, I'll go back to what I mentioned earlier. This is not a C1 
or a C2 project. This is a PCD project where we are allowing them over 20 units per acre in this yep. portion of the property. Uh, if anything, they need to build the most attractive wall that we have in the town, in, my, in the staff's opinion. And, and the Shot Creek, um, or, or Shot Concrete Block, uh, with vines growing over it, is not anywhere close to the standard that, that the staff would recommend. I think they need to, to look at brick or stone, some kind of masonry application uh, to the wall. Uh, to make it look as attractive as possible and present that design to you all because I haven't seen a design that uh, is consistent with the staff's recommendation either. Uh, but that's an example of, of what one might look like. Here's kind of a close-up of that. Another type of example where it's broken up and, and that's another so just something that makes it, you know, gives it some visual character and appeal that makes it look, uh, you know, quality uh, and, and something that is inviting and, and reflective of this zoning district and the objectives of this zoning district to have a higher standard of, of development. Um, so that's, that's the staff's thoughts on the wall. We would certainly not support what they are apparently proposing at this point with the solid concrete look and vines essentially drawing down it. Well, I agree with you, Mark, because, I mean, we're, we're allowing a higher density, uh, which means it also it needs to be a higher design and a smooth wall like that's not a higher design. I mean, we've got a wall out here on Campbell Station that we bricked. And we uh, we put stone uprights, and we're putting cap block on it. And I certainly think that's the direction you folks need to go on this wall. May I present to each of you what the developer has agreed to as an alternative? Mm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Let's see it. What have you got on top of it? It'd be a capstone with the with the uh, the required guardrail at the top. The coloring of this, um, how would that blend with your buildings? The coloring could be adjusted. That was just an example. Um, what we can do, and I don't want I want don't want to speak for the client, but I would foresee. Choosing the exact brick and then going off of that. Yeah. Is this a, is, what project is this? Do you know? I assume this is something from an actual project. Um, to be honest, Mark, I don't know where this project is, but I, I've I've seen the same finish before on other projects. And this does add a huge cost to him to do this, but he's willing to do it. Additionally, the idea was to still have the ivy to soften it even more. Yes. Unless you don't want it. No, <laughs> so. We don't. Um, I think there's maintenance with ivy that long term um, there should be. Let's put it that way. It should be. We've been down that road. It didn't yeah. work before. There's no reason why it would work again when it didn't work the first time. Well, also, if you look back at the, if we went with this type of wall with the colors that match the buildings, mm -hmm. um, if you look back at the concept plan, we also have in our landscaping plan trees and shrubs to be planted at the base of the wall to soften it up some also to take some of your eye away from it. You put Would you color the cap? The stuff that you're suggesting. So that it doesn't look like a banner? Just, uh... <laughs> We can, yes. Was built with the 
Uh, this looks to me like it's textured, but I don't see it really breaking up along. Well, that's foot one thing I was space, talking yeah. with David about. They might. I mean, if, again, it's up to you all to maybe have some pilasters in there to every so often to break up the expanse of. Yeah, the Campbell wall. Station wall is a good example yeah. of the breakup. Yeah. So where you got some vertical separation in the expanse of the whole wall, that might help break it up a little bit to give it. You know, a little more architecture, car character. character. Yeah. I don't think this is very attractive at all. So we we could work with you in regards to the pilasters on it. Well, this is the first I've seen this too, so I don't know if you know. Yeah, I don't really know. Um, it would seem to me that we need to get a resolution that they will do something other than the blank wall, and it sounds like this is. A shot at that, but I don't know that this really gives us enough information. Doesn't give me enough information to say yes or no on this. So I almost feel like we got to find a way to get some more information on what what is what the finished product is going to look like. I wasn't here during the original approval of this whole project, uh, and I'm really anxious to have that project in that area. But I think the Planning Commission has given a lot here to you guys, and I think it's time for you guys to give a little back here on this wall. And I think we're asking for something that really, really looks nice. And I think this is like halfway there. So I really, uh, the examples that you've given us there, I, the veneer, different stones or something, I think is more in line with what we would like to see, at least what I would like to see. And I, I think I'd like to ask you guys to, to reach out and try to try to do something that adds class and character to that project for our town. I understand that. Tyler Lindsay, 330 Concord Street, Charleston, South Carolina. I think we're having a little revisionist history here about the town giving up everything. Where we gave up C1, drive throughs like a Starbucks. We gave up a lot in the very beginning. Where nobody wanted a very basic Ingalls shopping center there. And this has been very difficult. So I just want to throw that out there. I was talking architecturally. Architecturally, I believe we're higher than when we started. It was 70, now 75. We just, will, just for reference to what we had proposed is actually a $500,000 act. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. The 500? Yes. The, the, what we passed out. Yeah. It's, five, it, it's a 500, it's a half a million dollar add to the project. So there is a lot of give. We don't, we don't throw it out there, but there is a lot between that and going with the condensing units on the top, on the top roof, all that. We, I mean, I just don't want you thinking that we're not taking this into Oh, we're not, but uh, we just had a wall done over on Campbell Station. Mm -hmm. We pretty well know what it cost mm -hmm. and uh, the materials, because we were the ones that bought the materials, mm -hmm. and we actually were the general contractor, and, and uh, mm -hmm. no, yeah. we, uh, we had a company to do the brickwork. It's a very nice looking wall, and that's kind of what we're looking for here. I'd have to echo the mayor's comments from the get, from the get go. I mean, it's, we have a, a model setting on Campbell Station Road over here of kind of what a vision is. And uh, he know, we know the cost of what that one was. And so can I ask if we could share can I ask you what approximately what this roof face was, was? But the idea is to get something that's, uh, you know, more. When I look at something like this, I, my first thing is it's, you know, stamped concrete just looks cheap. I don't care. I mean, yeah, it costs money to do it because you've got materials and labor, but, but it still is putting lipstick on the pig, in my opinion. And, uh, Again, because it, I, would like, I would like to know what breaking up figure. That, you know, breaking up that flat wall, too, is another important feature. I understand. For... For budgetary purposes, what was it? How much was it a square foot face to, re, to do the brick veneer? Well, I can tell you the. Uh, I think the brick cost was fifty something thousand. David will have to correct me on that if I'm right or wrong. And I think the labor was probably seventy something thousand to do that. And they've almost almost done with it. They like the cap block yet. No, I, but, I've driven by. Okay. It looks nice. I agree. It does look very nice. That's what we're looking for, Mark, right there. Okay. I understand. And we are, we, we, we mentioned that we're to look at the pilasters to break it up, the length of it with the pilasters as well. I mean, so that, we've already admitted to that, so. Yeah. Well, the, the, like I said, that's a nice looking wall. That's kind of what we're looking for here. So you, uh, want, you want a brick veneer wall? 
Could basically. That's up to you guys. No. No. Stone or brick is hard. Yeah. I'm concerned. It just doesn't need to look fake or false. I'm, I'm I'm looking for guidance. So you want a stone or a brick? Over there. You you've seen it. it I I know. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm just saying. So you, rough answer is yes. You want a brick veneer with stone pilasters, or vice versa, stone pile stone wall with a brick brick pilasters. Well, I'd probably try to match the buildings best I could. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know it's. But I, I just was trying to. I want to okay. make sure what we, when we present something back to you, that you're going to be happy with. That's. I'm just asking, what do you want? You got a color palette on the building yet? Roughly, we yes. don't have the specific brick picked out yet. Okay. But we did some elevations and. Yeah. I, I think it, that'd be a good time to to pick the wall brick as well. Yeah. But yeah. At the same time. Yes. I understand. As far as color. I understand. I was just looking for guidance. Okay. That's all. Appreciate your attempt to look at an alternative, well, here, but but again, that's a step you know, toward what I think we really want. I understand. I mean, but like when we submitted the like what you see on the screen right now is we had no clue what you all were thinking, and I just was throwing that up because that's the most generic thing you can throw up there, and was looking for some guidance. Now I've gotten some guidance. We've gotten some guidance. We now know what you're looking for. Now let's see if we can accomplish it. Okay. Okay. That's all. That's all I'm trying to say. So I guess we'll postpone a vote on this item today. Yeah, we don't really have anything to look at. I, I understand okay. that. Okay. And we understand that too. Okay. So one in, in, in agreement with the mayor's. Yes. Thoughts yes. on that? Yes. Okay. For postponement of item number two on that. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, one question before we adjourn, before you all adjourn and everything. We are trying to get everything else done. Can we be automatically put on next month's agenda, Mark? I'm, I'm fine with that if they are. I mean, because uh, we are, the clock is ticking yeah. for us in regards yep. to, because he got loan ap approval, and once the rate locks, we got 60 days to get our permits. Well, and we can't. We we got to keep the clock moving, and that's why I'm, I just want to make certain that we're still moving forward in the right direction. Okay, we we don't know what's going to happen with. Uh, uh, well, I agree. Uh, we I mean, understand that. Understand. I mean, we that. may not even be meeting next month. Okay? I understand that. Well, heck, HUD may shut down. Yep. I mean, let's be honest. So you know, the financing yeah. arm of everything may shut down. But we don't know that. We got to assume that it do isn't, and our clock is ticking. So we want to make sure we're moving forward as fast as possible. Understood. But, uh, let's just hope everything works out. I understand. Thank and you. thank you for your time and patience. Thank you, thank, thank you for coming. So there are no. Um, uh, have some citizen forum comments. Okay, we got to read that. Okay. But we have no uh, utilities at this time. No. Okay. Well. You want to do yeah, the honor? I do that. Yeah, I guess. Thank you. I'll try. Like I said earlier, we had three three citizen comments that were sent electronically by noon today. Um, and I'll just read these as, as they're written, if I can pronounce some of these words if I mess them up. Uh, sorry. First one is from Laura Squires. Um, she has two questions for the public record. Uh, Farragut is about to adopt a new comprehensive aesthetic plan. This may be appropriate for inclusion in that plan. If not included in the aesthetic plan, will Farragut adopt an ordinance as follows? One, with any antenna deployment of any 5G cellular antenna, at no location will Town of Farragut mandate more than one antenna per pole site PSS. Why should any single location take a potentially larger impact on their property value in order to reduce the number of poles that would impact another property owner's value positively? Two, limit the number of cellular carriers to service the town of Farragut to two. If cellular companies must be treated as other utilities, then the town of Farragut should hold them to the same standard as other utilities as is the standard for other utilities in Farragut for the Town of Farragut website, one vendor per type of utility, one to provide power, 
LCUB, one to provide water and sewer, first utility, one to provide gas, KUB. Other pseudo utilities such as cable providers were only available from two vendors when I moved to Farragut in 2012, Charter or TDS. I had wanted to bring my Comcast service to my new home in Farragut but could not because they were not a service provider in Farragut. As Farragut copes with the 5G deployment intended potentially intended potentially by a large number of carriers, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, U.S. Cellular, and others, will Farragut adopt an ordinance that in the town of Farragut only two service providers of 5G are permitted. This would seem to be consistent with how other utilities are treated in Farragut. This would reduce colon, the potential impact on property value due to an unknown number of poles per company and the total emission of radiation from the antenna. Fewer carriers equals fewer antenna equals fewer emissions. From FCC rules September 2018, she has a quote, prohibits the state or local government from imposing any statute, regulation, or legal requirement that prohibits any entity from providing or extending interstate or intrastate telecommunication services. The rules effectively preempt the 2018 state law. If we limit to only two service providers for Farragut consistent with other utilities in Farragut, how could we be accused of prohibiting something we are allowing? And uh, let's see, from the town website, and finally the last part here, utilities. Town of Farragut utilities are provided by First Utility District, quote, water and sewer. Knoxville Utilities Board, gas, and LCUB, electric. Other utilities and services include cable television and garbage services. Recycling is available from Knox County and private vendors. The second uh, comment that was provided was a comment in response to that comment. <laughs> and this is from Lee Pinnell. And he says, hi all. I think we should make a slight change. Limiting the number of transmitters slash antenna per pole does not prohibit another carrier from putting another pole two feet away. So the provision needs to be regarding density instead of the number per pole. And then finally, the last one. <clears throat> That's only one on him? That's only one okay, on him. thank you. Yeah, and the third one is from Mike Mitchell. And he asked to please enter this into the public record. It, uh, and I will start. The Farragut Planning Commission must study the medical danger of 5G small cell towers slash antennas close to our homes. Specifically, a baseline in Farragut must be established to make sure no home in Farragut is exposed to more than the U.S. federal limit for cellular radiation. To do this, Farragut must purchase radiation testing equipment and first establish a baseline for all existing cellular towers in Farragut. Then as new towers slash antennas are installed, they must be measured. A computer database to record these tests must be created. Having more than one 5G small cell towers slash antennas on a pole on LCUB pole should not be allowed in the town of Farragut. This will increase the radiation load beyond federal limits. Uh, while this will increase the number of poles with 5G towers slash antennas, it is the only way to make sure no single family is exposed to radiation in excess of federal limits. Please know that there is not a single medical, toxicological, or epidemiological, <laughs> I knew I was gonna butcher that one, demiological, epidemiological, that shows uh, 5G small cell towers slash antennas are safe to be near humans. There are, however, thousands of uh, studies that show these cellular devices harm human health and can cause cancer and even death. And he references a website, https backslash, uh, backslash www.emf-portal 
org backslash en the internet information platform emf portal of the rwth aiken university summarizes systematically scientific research data on the effects of electromagnetic fields emf all information is va made available in both english and german the core of the emf portal is an extensive literature database with and an inventory of 30,758 publications and 6,703 summaries of individual scientific studies on the effects of electromagnetic fields. Sincerely, Mike Mitchell. That's, that's all that was submitted. What was the name of that university? Aiken. A -A Aiken? It is spelled A-A-C-H-E-N. Uh, Seem it's German. Born. Okay. Yep. Would you attach those to the meeting minutes when we get when you print the meeting? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's it. Anybody else on the planning commission have a question or a comment? Nope.